guys and welcome to my new video. Today I'll be showing you how I actually did this animation in Unreal Engine 5.3 and I'll be talking about a few things that could make your scene super realistic. I will also explain everything from the ultra volumetrics that I used in this project which you can get from Unreal Engine store, the few steps to make the scene and even more. But before we dig deeper into this tutorial, I need to show you that you can now go to my channel and click on join to become a member to get exclusive access to perks and you will have access to loyalty badges next to your name in comments and live chat, photos and status updates, members chat room, virtual video collaborations and more. I am thrilled to have you as our biggest supporter. So basically, this scene is actually not what you think it is. I did my best to make the scene as small as possible so it doesn't have to render a lot of things and it could finish you know fast so if I go here to viewport 3 you will see that this scene is actually really really small now you realize that you can make so many things in Unreal Engine 5.3 and they don't have to be really that massive projects you don't have to fill every single corner or do a lot of foliage just to get this small shot no you just have to mess around a little bit and you'll get what you want all right let's talk about the directional light a little bit so if i go to my directional light and i scroll down you can see that light shafts both are checked because you know this makes my scene more epic more realistic and now I'm gonna scroll up again and I'm gonna decrease the intensity and increase the source angle now what is a source angle if you look closely here I'm gonna decrease the source angle we can see that the light is getting more sharp but I actually don't want this I want the things to be soft in this so I'm gonna control Z and I'm gonna increase it to 4 again and you can see that the sunlight is actually a little bit better now of course there are some scenes that require for you to have a really really uh, sharp angle maybe you're filming something interior and you want the sunlight to be really sharp on a specific uh, object and that's okay what makes my light shaft really really good is the exponential height fog the exponential height fog is really important if you want a scene like this. Now if I scroll down, if I click on exponential height fog and scroll down, you can activate this by checking volumetric fog. And I actually did not mess with any of the settings here. I only messed a little bit with the directional light and I got what I wanted. Remember that directional light and exponential height fog and tweaking the settings of this are not important if you don't know how to create your scene properly. For example, I added these objects to prevent the sunlight from lighting up all my scene. I just want it to go in a certain way and I want the light shaft as well to go in a certain way. For example, let me change this to here. You can see that the light shaft increases and if I get it back to where it was I have a small cool light shaft and this one is to prevent from the Sun from getting everywhere it depends what you actually want just know how to build your scene properly post process volume it's very important as much as the other things that I explained let me go here first and explain some stuff that I changed in the post process let's go here first and I'll scroll down and you can see that I have the um, blue method checked. So if I increase the bloom here, you can see that there is more bloom to the scene. Of course, if I render it, it's gonna be really different because it's high quality render. But for me, I'm gonna stick to this number. Now I'm gonna scroll down more and you can see also I have exposure, auto exposure basic and Exposure compensation is set to this. Now if I change that and change that, you can see it's really dark here. 
and of course you don't want your scene to be that dark. Now we keep on scrolling down and we have also a lens flare. Now I thought I'm gonna use this but for me I don't think I will use it. A lens flare is a lens flare. You can see these uh, things here. These come from the sun and if you choose to remove it you can remove it by putting this to zero. I have it on one and in this scene it's not that important for me. Now for lumen I go down and I global illumination I have it on. It's usually not checked so I check this and I activated this to lumen. You can use these clouds and not the normal engine clouds by going to settings, plugins, search for volumetrics, activate this and restart your engine. And after doing that, go to here, add uh, visual effects and volumetric cloud. After you add this, you click on volumetric clouds and then go to all engine plugins, scroll down and search for volumetric content and content sky materials and volumetric clouds and volumetric clouds scroll down i have the 02 profiles which is i think this one yeah 02 profiles paint clouds you just drag and drop this here and you will have these you can also tweak them as much as you want just to make them realistic okay now ultra volumetrics it's a very good plugin which you can use for your scene that interacts with the objects, foliage and everything. If I click on this and raise it a little bit, you can see that we have a small fog down. And you can get this by going to the Epic Games and search for Ultra Volumetrics. I'm going to put this link in the description. Click on it and it's for $20. We have really cool scenes here that you can create from this. For example, this one, this is actually really cool. Of course, the uh, foliage is from the Quixel content and the uh, Mega Scan trees are from Epic Games. You can see here Mega Scan trees, uh, which are really, really good and realistic. Now, for the foliage, I'm gonna go to the foliage, and you can see here um, I added foliage here, but remember that. For example, I scale this to 1.1 and if I go to that one, I have it on 1, this one on 2, so it scales different foliage uh, to my scene. For the render high quality final result, so you have to go to your settings, go to plugins and type in movie, render and activate these two. And after you've done that, after you created your scene, and the camera shake uh, there is a there are a lot of tutorials which can help you make a camera shake but uh, I'll teach you one if you need one and now go to window cinematics a uh, movie render and the mine is called sequence root there it is when I click here you can see I have only these options I usually delete that one keep these two and I add this one and console variables and PNG which I need my uh, renders to be rendered as a PNG and here I leave everything the same I go here and press this 64 so it goes on the image like it renders the image 64 times for example you can think of it like this so it makes a really high quality image and console variables I can add my console variables by going to console variable and if I go to here, I have these four options which I can add one by one. For example, Control C, Control V, and then I hit Enter, and I go down and I add them and I add them. And then I go to Output, I change this to 30 frames per second, and I keep this the same because I don't want this to be a 4K, an 8K or something. I can add these uh, console variables in the description also, which you can use them if you want to make a re super realistic uh, scene. 
this stuff is uh, very important for you to learn for example the basics are really important which you should know for example how to uh, add a directional light a skylight visual effects sky atmosphere and you know the things to get you started for creating a scene if you want it to be outside but of course uh, when it comes to going to interior design or anything else it's different i really hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to like and subscribe